I'm doing a book right now for Del Rey that's like all of Star Wars, you know, it's 50 paintings and, and it focuses a lot of the classic stuff, which is, you know, what I'm really into. It's cool because I have kids now that are at that age that they're really into that stuff, so, you know. Yeah, they're just now starting to get it. I think for a while they thought that every dad, you know, did that kind of thing, you know, so. Um, so all the work I've done for like Star Wars and now the Batman Begins uh, movies out and I did a bunch of stuff for that and all that stuff's showing up now and uh, so yeah they're they're into it and it's fun it's and it makes me more excited about it being able to share it with with my kids and then their kids like it and you know so it's cool so if it's a comic you know you spend a lot of time with the script and you you know read it a couple times and you know hopefully you can work with the writer and then you work on the layouts and and. Uh, you know, and then I do like a ton of research, you know, and then um, if it's like a movie like Superman Returns, I was just in Australia working on that and basically you get there, get a feel for what they're doing, look at the designs, you know, read the script. I had seen Hank Ketchum on television. Uh, he was being interviewed about the movie that was coming out with Walter Matthau as Mr. Wilson. And in the interview, he was asked what he wanted to do with the rest of his life. I was at a low point in my career as an illustrator. I had been a freelancer for 20-some years, and computer graphics kind of put my career on the skids. Uh, and I guess I was just looking for an opportunity to come along, and this seemed like a good one. So I called Mr. Ketchum out in California and said, uh, Mr. Ketchum, I'm an artist in Charlotte, North Carolina. If you're serious about retiring, I would love to draw Dennis. And after seeing some samples of my work, he agreed to train me to take over drawing the Monday through Saturday panel when he would retire. And he actually retired from the daily drawing in 1994. And I've been doing it ever since. Brian and I like to think that Ex Machina is very much like the world that we live in, but it's just like one DNA strand, you know, away from our version of reality. And what we're trying to do with Machina is um, so show everybody like, a different version of those events and how how the world you know is changed in either a good or bad way based on like one tiny portion of an event that's different than it actually happened. I did the Green Lantern, I created Wildcat and with Sheldon May as my editor I did all the covers for Wonder Woman Green Lantern, the Justice Society, Flash. So I, I did most of that stuff as a young man. I went on USO trips to Korea, Japan, yes, Germany, and I met a cartoonist named Gus Edson, who created the Gumps. And the Gumps are going downhill, and he asked me would I be interested in working on a strip with him. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not busy, but I didn't say that. I just said, when you're not working, you say you're in advertising. So he sent me a letter showing a picture of Dandy. And I said, Gus, we're going to have the best comic strip in America. The design production sketches that they sent were sort of incomplete. For the first issue, we were actually working off the Cartoon Network version of Grievous, and that's all we had to go on. There's, you know, an extra layer of approval that's going on. You're actually dealing with somebody else's franchise, and they can be very protective of it um, in terms of getting back to you about mistakes you've made. Um, the, other, the other aspect of it is that in the, in the case of Lucasfilm, they can actually be sort of secretive about the characters and what the characters look like, right up to the point where they're not telling you everything you conceivably find useful in drawing the character. Um, General Grievous, we didn't find out until comparatively late that he was able to split his arms and do four arms for a sword fight. We were able to squeeze that in the last issue. Oh, that's why. <laughs> And I forgot I'd done this until not too long ago back, and I sucked. I had moved to England and uh, out in the middle of the countryside, and I decided that seeing that I'm out here and I'd rather work at home, and I want to stay in storytelling. I'd been working in film for a long time, and I just love storytelling. And I comics was the next next thing to go to. Is it is it plume or plog? Blue. I've heard one person say it's blue, guys. It's an aeroplane. That's what I thought. <laughs> During that period of time, I mean, uh, 
a lot of books were started, and there's an enormous amount of books on the bookshelves. And unless a book is promoted and pushed by a company, uh, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to succeed. And at that time, nobody really promoted books. It was uh, put it out there, fill the bookshelf, don't let the opposition get onto the shelf, and uh, see how it works. But uh, the ghostwriter. I, 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 it wasn't. Uh, it was too close to the occult, you know. And uh, uh, I don't think people were ready for that, you know. And I mean, I wasn't even ready for it. That I was the artist. <laughs> you work by yourself in a solitary confinement, and then you come out, and you get to find out what their reactions are, you know. So. Uh, and that's always a thrill for me. So it's the only time I get to touch base with my audience. So I relish it. I'm lucky in that I don't really have to spend that much time alone because I share a studio with, with a couple of guys. So I actually have an office to go to in the morning, and and you know I can I can work and bounce things off of other guys and that sort of thing. And um, so it's it, it's helpful to have people around you know like that that I can I can helped juice me a little bit creatively, so pretty cool. It was just one of those things I've always uh, always done this, you know, and I've always wanted to do it, so I just did a, a lot of conventions and met up with other artists, and sooner or later somebody offered me something, and I've been working ever since. The first film I worked on uh, for almost the entire shoot, and then uh, for a good six months before they even shot it, you know, writing uh, script outlines and things like that, so. I was I was heavily involved with it, so if it failed, you know, it would have been a failure on my part as well. Unfortunately, the I think they just released the fourth one, and they've, they've grown progressively worse as the uh, um, as the films have went along, you know. And they're basically they're just retelling the same story over and over. After the first film, uh, the the only way I would agree to participate in another one is if we changed it completely and made it a woman. So I wrote out um, this story called The Bride where it was a woman who was killed at her wedding and she comes back to um, avenge all the people that killed her, her fiance and the, and the wedding party. Um, and was told it was implausible, people wouldn't, wouldn't buy it, people wouldn't go for a female hero. Um, you know, for, unfortunately, or fortunately, n no one told Quentin Tarantino that wouldn't work because Kill Bill made excess of $200 million in the U.S. alone, so. Um, Since I was about 13 years old, I was either going to be a paleontologist or I was going to be, um, I was going to be a comic book artist like John Byrne, who was, uh, who was my favorite artist uh, as a young man. And um, as you can see, I'm not digging up dinosaur bones right now. I'm drawing a uh, Green Lantern. He was never a bad guy. Um, you know, he was just uh, had a moment's weakness, and, and that kind of uh, shook up his whole destiny. But um, how was it for me? It was, it was stupendous. It was an amazing opportunity. And um, I miss it. I wish it wasn't over. I wish I was still working on it right now. That's the best part about Heroes Con is because I really get to touch base with my fans, and um, uh, I do believe that um, I probably have some of the better fans out there because you know I mean they've been loyal with me through thick and thin, good times and bad times. So um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here, happy to be at Heroes Con. I played, I played villains and I've been killed playing villains too, and uh, I've, been this, I've been killed playing heroes too. And, uh, I've been a little movie called The Prey. I was. Uh, I had my neck broken by Carl. You know what my mother was. Whatever his name. I can't remember Carl's last name. Who played uh, Lurch on the Adams Family movie? <laughs> Didn't even know it. I was signing pictures, and uh, he was sitting next to me, and we were signing. And somebody came up and said, "Weren't you in the prey?" And he said, "Yes." And my wife turned to me and said, "Well, honey, weren't you in the prey too?" I said, "Yeah." Well, so was Carl. I turned around and said, "Dang, you're the one that killed me." It's him in us to know that uh, that uh, a superhero has to prevail, good over evil. When I was growing up, my my heroes were Tarzan, uh, the Lone Ranger, Clayton Moore was a very good friend of mine, and uh, uh, Captain Marvel from the comic books. 